Hey, this week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer. What accepting Christ does is it completely shifts who you are. No, it doesn't. How can this ceremony have any real import? He just talks and it's very smooth. Right. It's flowing. You believe every word. It's the type of person that I've learned to sort of be like, oh man, there's a little bit of cult leader. I don't believe every word. That's the beauty of this podcast is we don't all share the same exact opinions. And then if you're part of a culture that tells you, hey, this means you will experience persecution. Guess what? You're going to find persecution. I can't judge him the same way that I would judge me, you, and your shitty Christianity. We are naturally cool, cussing drinkers. That's right. This podcast. That's just who we are. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Rose Bibles and Beer. This is Jeff. It's episode 236. How's it going, Zach? We may have beer breath, but most of us don't have coke nose. Ooh, uh, Andy! The Bible made me do it! Jeff? Uh, I'm in sin, deeply. Oh, <laughs> alright. Uh, I didn't even think about that, and it just came out. That might be a problem. The truth wants to come <laughs> we'll out. We'll talk about it in a second, yeah, we'll but first. Uh, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. I am Andy McCraw, joined by Zach Crater and Jeff Pearson. We're a podcast that talk, has serious conversations on faith and culture without taking ourselves too seriously. Three good friends who have very different opinions on faith, culture, the Bible, the Jesus, all the things. Um, boys, how's it going? It's going excellently. Uh, yeah, well. Okay. Uh, but I... I I want to, we got a bunch of new subscribers and some notables. Uh, hey, Nolan Reynolds, Jim Deem, Zach Corcoran, Gio Teshi Torta, Jack Attack, and Gio Teshi Torta were two separate people. Gio Teshi or Techi? It, it might be Techi. The Geo Techi. Geo Techi. Techi. Sorry. And uh, just those are notables. We've got so many new. You know, we've got so many nudable su- subscribers. There's so many people. Nudibles, there's so many. Nudibles. There's nudables. I've neutered them. I do like, I, I do enjoy some uh, Jim Deem whiskey every Jim once in a while. I'll Deem. drink some Jim, Jim Deem. Deem. So just like these folks have done, uh, we would love you to like and subscribe us on YouTube. You can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Rate and Review, anywhere you check out uh, the podcasts, your favorite podcast apps. Also, Brand new. We're introducing it this week. Send us a voicemail. Yes. Okay. If you send us a voicemail, we'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, speakpipe.com slash bros. Correct. Speakpipe. Speakpipe.com slash bros. Dot com splat. And so you can leave us an audio. Oh my gosh. Onto a great start. You can leave us. Slash bros. You can leave us a voicemail and we will play it. On on our episodes without listening to it first, and we won't edit it. We promise, uh, mostly promise, Thanks. mostly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank so you. so coming up, we we're, we're going to talk about. Well, coming up later, we're going to do listener feedback, feedback of which we have a lot. Um, and all, and then uh, yeah, coming up, we'll be talking about uh, Russell Brand got baptized, and is there a danger of embracing uh, Christian mascots, uh, whatever that means. But we're going to get into it. Um, but first, I think we got some Jeff's ra- rapid fire with Jeff. We do have rapid fire. But first, actually, you said you're in sin. You did say you were in sin. Without even thinking about it, you yeah. said, I am in sin. Would you care to uh, pithily explain? Yeah, it's very short and sweet. Uh, I'm giving a talk this Saturday at uh, a, a men's event, and uh, I, I've been going, churning through my life. Old few years back, few months back, few weeks back, and and there's sin just keeps coming up in in my brain, and I'm like just so lost in certain segments of the last five years, and uh, I'm like, it's just it's something that you can't avoid. And this you, is super vague. Um, yeah, I know. Is that intentional? Are we going to leave it, it like that? It, I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. Um, it's just. Sin is there, and it's it, the darkness is always coming for me, and uh, it's like, not today, not today. Let's go, Jesus. So, anyway. Um, the Lord, I, the I, Lord wants you to sit in a little bit of shame for a while, though. Yeah, and this is my, sh- <laughs> this is my shame. Uh, 
I'm, I, for those who are just listening, I'm holding a paper bag with a can inside. We, there's been a little criticism to our bros, Bibles, and beer, uh, the Bibles and the beer. Um, and so I'm brown bagging it. And I'm really not brown bagging it. This is a tequila Paloma. So, you know, there you go. I'm like drinking. a shitty magician. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whoa, I pulled a Paloma out of a bag. <laughs> I'm drinking. That's my sin tonight. I'm not a drunkard, but... I'm just That's drinking. My the homeless magician on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> ah, screw this bag. <laughs> Jeff. Oh, we did. Speaking of Jeffs, we got Jeff on Jeff on the ones and zeros. Hey, Jeff. Hi, everyone. All oh, right, from God. fast. The world is fascinating. YouTube, Indeed. fascinating world. <laughs> all both sure. all of those work. One of those. Also, Darth Vader's cousin. <laughs> you might know Jeff from uh, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> from when he was on YouTube. From the YouTube. I'm talking. You don't have the camera oh, on me. Sorry, fired. I was paying attention to myself. Fired. Yes, I'm fired. Out. I'm out. This I'm is, out now. You're this now. is what happens. But I have a great laugh face, and that's what he was he was getting my reaction. I was getting the reaction yeah. laugh face. Hey, yep. Andy on three. One, you, two, three. You're fired. fired. There you go. God. So tough. All right. I heard we got rapid fire last time. Oh, yes. Sorry. Andy, Andy was the victim. Yeah, Andy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Zach, here we go. Rapid fire. Jeff, put ninety seconds on the clock. <laughs> All right, Jeff's got it in his head. <laughs> here we go. What did you change going into marriage? My clothes. Screw you. What did you change going into marriage when it relates to your wife in the relationship? My habits. How's that working out? Uh, Twenty years in, mostly good. Okay. Does your wife iron your pants? No. Do your pants say pants of the patriarchy on the buttocks? No, but sometimes it's implied. <laughs> Is your faith flexible? Oh, yeah. Better Do than my hammies. Uh, okay. And what does Jesus think about your faith and its flexibility? I hope to ask him one day. Do you think you lack conviction in your faith? Uh, no. But you're flexible in your faith? Yes. If God told you to kill, what would that mean to you? It means I'm not hearing from God. Okay, you're That's so what it means to me. <laughs> it! What if he told you to kill it? Yeah, <laughs> man, just get out there and kill it. That's what I'm doing right now! <laughs> And uh, just sticking with the theme of every single week, what do you think about Mormons? Love them. They're super nice. And how about their pants? Oh, it's all patriarchy all the time. Okay. Thank you for letting me torture you. I don't know if that was so much torture, though. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of pants action in this one. Uh, yeah. I you want to get in these? <laughs> You are in sin. I think I do have some of your shorts, but none of your pants. You might. Those pants are tight. You got tight pants on tonight, man. What I mean? Oh, yeah. The, a little bit. Yeah, but no shapes. Zach Crater, uh, pants uh, of the patriarchy. No shapes. no shapes. These aren't slacks. Um, These are slim fit. They're not skinny, so I think I'm still okay. Flexible you, faith thing is like more... I think I, we actually have a book. Holding my called that holding my th my options open just being loose with what i but i do have convictions you're breaking the rules <laughs> okay you don't get to All qualify right. yeah but however we did have a a guest on several years ago who had the book flexible faith bonnie christian there you go yep that's awesome i like that book and actually that's I still a, like that book that's a book we go back to every once in a while um because it's just like a choose your own adventure you could just pick a topic and We'll probably end up using it again because it's like, what do you guys want to talk about? What if we just, boom, just close your eyes, flip through it pages and just mash your finger down. All right. We're talking about that. It's that kind of book and it works. I, I do. I mean, this is, you know, this is not, not planned. This is a, just a conversation between us. But uh, as the more I think about it, the more you always kind of reside in the middle of everything. Like, well, maybe, or we'll see. And I'm like, there's, it's, it, do you feel like there's some place in your belief that you're like, I'm totally convicted? 
I'm sorry. I'm looking at the show notes, Jeff. No, this is a 30 second Where thing. Where is this? I'll give him one. Je- Jeff is now violating. You called me out. Now Jeff, Jeff is violating. I'll take- second, second Jeff getting fired tonight. <sighs> Jeff one, you got fired a while ago. Jeff two, don't make me fire you. <laughs> Jeff two, electric boogaloo. I'll give you one. If I am a Christian right now, it's a uh, universal redemption through Jesus type of Christian. And I feel pretty confident in that, as confident as anything else. And okay. that's, that is a conviction that li- leaves me outside of most Christians' boxes. Okay. Which sounds All right. weird, but... Thank you. All right. A- Andy? Next time, put yeah. it on the show, show notes, <laughs> and then you can talk about it. <laughs> Sorry. We talked about this before. All right. We, you teased some segments, though, at the beginning. I did. And we got to get to those segments. I'm excited to. We do gots to. It's, it's really... You said you said Christian mascots, but you left out the key the key name. I did. You left out the Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Hey, so when I say Christian mascot, does that mean anything to you? And Jeff, if anything, uh, producer Jeff, if anything jumps to your mind, feel free to to chime in. <laughs> Christian mascot. The two things that come to mind for me are the mascots from the two Christian universities I went to. The first one is the Pirates. Okay, <laughs> not your classic Christian mascot that you normally think of that's more old testament the horned based. frogs of texas christian <laughs> and the second one the warriors warriors and pirates we had the wheaton crusaders i like that Ooh, one. wow they, they it, changed that since i was, I was just gonna ask they changed it about <laughs> six or ten years ago or something like that they changed it there was the georgia sword swallowers that was a good one <laughs> <laughs> fantastic <laughs> They actually just changed to that recently. <laughs> just yeah, it's wow. in the news. Yeah, they really led up to it well too. Anyway, uh, so those are actual uh, mascots. But what I'm thinking of is like when I was growing up, I remember uh, finding like seeing Hulk Hogan, and I'm a child of the '80s, born in '78. I'm an old ass man, but. As long as I'm sitting next to you, Jeff, I look so young and chipper. (laughs) Um, 80s and 90s, wrestling. Hulk Hogan, Mr. T in there, also the A-team. But guys like that, that would reference God sometimes. Like, I just want to thank God. It's like me and my brother are like, yeah, Yeah. thank God. (laughs) We're on his team. Yeah, go World Wrestling (laughs) Federation. (laughs) And God, <laughs> but there is something too. Like I, you just want naturally. Oh, somebody of high profile. You just assume they think all the same things about God that you do. But they said God, and you have a sense of God, and so yay. You guys, have any, have any version of that growing up? I had some of that growing up. Um, Daryl Strawberry. I think he joined the Dodgers. New York Mets. Oh, speaking Dodgers. of Coconos, Do- yeah. Doyers. <laughs> I think uh, so. I can't. It was right around the time he, he had either just joined the Dodgers or uh, was going to, and I was a really big fan of his. And he and he converted. He he proclaimed that he became a Christian. And that whole season, right after that, when he played for the Dodgers, he was terrible, absolutely terrible. And I was like, I, I, my roller coaster ride of like, yes, we got one down to. God. You become a Christian. What you you broke your sports? Yep. You become a Christian. Now you have a bullseye on your back, and batting averages go down. Dude, yeah, it's obviously the devil. The Lord hates the Lord <laughs> hates the Dodgers. I can do all things through Christ. My ass. We don't do things with bats. Okay. No bats. No gloves. Yeah, I remember that one. But in general, uh, what? I have caught myself having the reaction when I see when I see a celebrity or like a high profile celebrity, someone who I wouldn't expect, and we'll talk about a few of them today. Uh, I do catch myself going like, "Yeah, hey, that's that's cool," and in a way that I don't think I would for any just standard civilian. Um, no, I think uh, whether it's a uh, somebody that's famous. Somebody that's maybe even, uh, I've never, again, thinking politics, but that's always beforehand. Uh, but yeah, the famous person who comes out and is like, I'm Christian. I'm going to, you know, I am love Jesus Christ. And, you know, and it's something new. Um, I'm like, hmm, 
That's fantastic. But the, I guess the thing that I'm excited about is that industry is so dry that when someone's like, I'm going to Jesus, I believe in Christ, I'm like, wow, that is, you're, you're going against the grain in terms of your industry. And, and I think that's probably the big, the big, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, the biggest one you, I can think of recently Jeff, is Jeff is, used all his words. Is Kanye. <laughs> You told me I only had Kanye 32 was words. A huge one recently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that worked out really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because I have a link pulled up right now. By the way, could someone find my brain? <laughs> That's all right. You, you'll fi- it'll find you. You snorted it. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Jeff's, Jeff's Coke knows. <laughs> we, what? We were not going to talk about my French toast eating today. <laughs> okay. Oh, was that part of your sin that you mentioned that was vague? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, if you don't like us because we drink beer, <laughs> you're gonna love us. <laughs> just wait till we involve cocaine, which oh, is a joke. God, just, just California. It's a I'm joke. just imagining comments. <laughs> just right, keep the us way, going. Yes, keep yeah, us going. Yeah. So, okay, w- one thing we are is we try to be honest. So occasionally that results in a language and whatnot and um, goofy shenanigans. And if you can't get with that, it's probably the wrong show for you. All right. Kanye West, so he did, he had a whole album, which I don't remember what it was called. This is like two or three years ago, probably. Gospel album. And Mm -hmm. he had his Jesus moment, big conversion, uh, Jesus, uh, and it fairly recently, what's the date on this thing? March 15, 2024. Kanye West says he has issues with Jesus. I prayed and he didn't show up. And also, I, I'm not sure how much we'll talk about this, but he he did mention that, uh, well, there's a possibility. It's been rumored, and he hasn't denied it, that he might be getting into the porn industry. So, but he said... Uh, much more lucrative, probably. Yeah. Uh, Which came first, the denial or the porn? Yeezy and Ty Dolla Sign stopped by Big Boy TV to discuss all things vultures on Friday. This is March 15th. Vultures? Interview took not the uh, John Mayer album uh, or the song. That's how white we are. <laughs> we're like, we think of things in John Mayer. <laughs> we're over 40 and we're white. I'm over 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're over 40 still. 50 is over 40. No, and you're a math teacher. No, I'm over, <laughs> We're going to still 50. wait on your brain. Yeah. <laughs> Here it comes. Why don't you just sit the next few plays out? <laughs> Stop! Stop! <laughs> uh, Big Boy began by asking West about his current religious feelings, and feelings might be the best word. <laughs> and West was more than happy to explain his outlook. He said, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed, and I ain't see Jesus show up. I had to put my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music I was dealing with in my own hands that's a problem does he describe <clears throat> later on what he means by jesus not showing up um the next quote a lot of times i feel like in our society in america people christians we depend on jesus so much that we won't put in the work ourselves the main thing i don't rock with is like i'm gonna pray for you it's just like you can actually physically do something yourself too more than just praying we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen, but we ain't praying our way out of prison. We ain't pr- uh, praying our way out of the abortion clinics. We ain't praying our way to get our land back that is always ours after gentrification, after the Harlem Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burnt to the ground. Them prayers ain't working. It'd be interesting to ask Kanye. Um, Can we get Kanye on? I was, yeah, Kanye, oh, I, if you're <clears throat> listening... <laughs> I mean, speakpipe.com slash bros. <laughs> Leave <laughs> us a voicemail. Wait, can you do another one where I'm not laughing? Yeah. I'll, I'll be I can't serious. wait like, for that to I'm come in. Stepping on my lines. <laughs> uh, I, I would wonder, like, it's what it sounds like is that Kanye has a, an idea in his head of how prayer is supposed to work and that it is that it's, it's a request line <laughs> and that, um, that you're supposed to put in your request. And if they don't get answered, then something's wrong. Yeah. Or no. it doesn't, it doesn't right. work. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I don't know if I, I didn't go into Christianity thinking that, but when things went 
when things went sideways, because I literally just, when I look, reflect back, I'm like, you were not following the spirit. You were just going off into human land of like, Ooh, I want, I want, I want. Personal and, responsibility there, and, Jeff. Yeah. And some of it was, you know, praying for things, but it, it certainly wasn't, you know, praying for like, oh, I hope I win the lottery so I can, you know, be a millionaire or so things go my way. It, you know, and I'm thinking Kanye was like, you know, if I go this way, then, you know, everything will, you know, just kind of roll in the way I want it to. And that is not, I mean, the life in Christ is you're getting refined. You're and not promised anything. He's not, not, he's at not all. promising you that all of these things are going to be okay. And so it, it, I, I'm not saying that to like shit on Kanye having a, a, a rough patch in life. That's not it at no. all. I'm just saying like part of what I hear there is someone who's new to Christianity and and is encountering this like crisis in their faith and going like, wait a minute, I thought it was supposed to be different. And and it doesn't feel different. And and to his credit, maybe he's he's like wondering what prayer is for. It sounds like he doesn't know. I don't think he has people around him that are actually Probably building not. him up and Probably encouraging him. Because no. it sounds like he hit a wall and then he's like, ah, this isn't working. Let's go elsewhere in the worst way. And it's terrible. I'm not exactly sure, you know, how that functions in terms of like people are like, ah, I believe in Christ and I accept Christ and then they move forward in it. And then it's like, this is difficult. Uh, I'm like, I'm not exactly sure if you were a Christian in the first place because or you or there was just the roots never even took root or it's like <laughs> what do what do we expect what the lens we look through is like what you expect and what do you expect out of life and if you put on the jesus clothes or or have a conversion experience <clears throat> or decide to dedicate your life to, to christ depending on what new lenses you're putting on if life doesn't match out up with that your expectations can get violated and, and then it's like, well, I thought this was the case that this was what's supposed to be done. That's why actual, like it's important to, for people to know if you are going to quote unquote, commit to following Jesus or invite Jesus into your heart, which never says in the Bible, but I, I get why people do that. It's I like, like your little side note. Knowing where, knowing like, what does that mean? But and then if you're part of a culture that tells you, hey, this means you will experience persecution, guess what? You're gonna find persecution. I I wouldn't be surprised if the comment that you said earlier about him maybe not having people around him is probably one of the the strongest indicators of what like or strongest influences as, as to why you're seeing him react the way he is. I will say this: uh, my reaction to Kanye becoming a Christian was different i think than it was for some of the other people like kat von d we talked about a couple of weeks ago russell brand as well um some of these like other notable uh celebrities and i think mainly it's just because it's from what i've seen obviously we we don't know them personally we can't judge their hearts or their minds or their motives it just feels different it it, it feels a little bit different kanye's felt um strangely really mega public and um absolutely kind of capitalized on in weird ways like i mean he made an album and he's making money from a gospel album i, I don't know it and i, I just felt uh, like a little ambivalent I and guess is what literally I'm to get to. and literally had his name in the in the hat for vp for uh the Republican Party or or an independent with Donald, right. right? For a minute, there was I like mean, even if it was just for a speck, it but that Christianity, that Christianity side, threw him into that that hat and and so. Oh, you think that was it? I don't think that was it. I think it was because he was black and he liked Trump and and it was all like, of the oh let's all get, of those let's check, get the black vote. yeah all of those check boxes black Christian I don't know if he was Christian at the time I don't remember well he added to the he he added to yeah. his uh, leverage uh, but I Donald Trump I gotta I gotta secure the nomination <laughs> Jeez, that's my Kanye I don't know. <laughs> That's what's so. I mean, speaking of like Trump, 
every Republican candidate for president has to do the establish their. I think Christian, we're getting off the topic. No, because it it's well, we're not going to talk about Trump except that there was like. I'm a Christian. There's like his ceremony where he's like, he's praying with Christian leaders kind of at his inauguration. Sounds like you're talking about Trump after you said not talking about Trump. No, I said, except that, <laughs> but he might be the ultimate mascot because like he says, he's not, he said most Christians were like, yeah, he's not a, he's a baby Christian. People have also said that about Kanye and people are also saying that about Russell Brand, who we'll get to. I just a baby. Um, I, I mean, ultimately, does it does it matter if they're a baby Christian or a veteran Christian? I mean, if they've if, if they've accepted well, if they've accepted Christ and they're like, this is the life I'm going to live. Obviously, Kanye has. I, I don't know if he's having big questions and doubts, and he's like, I'm just going in this direction. I don't even know if he's throwing it out there because he is he is someone who garners a lot of followers in the social world that he's, he's saying that like oh i'm gonna start a porn company i'm like okay that's gonna get a lot of viral he's viral he's videos he's previously referred to himself as having a full-on pornography addiction that destroyed my family um so you can probably say that for a million families across the yeah the country but the fact that he's Redabbling in that i kanye i almost not give him a pass but he might actually be nuts like he he might be i think there is it's total bipolar yeah um and so he's which he's a creative genius when he's firing and that mania is happening i think that allows him to create and just there's no bad ideas just keep going keep pumping them out and so when that's going well he's one of the most prolific artists that we've seen um the downside is like just the the extreme swings of the pendulum. So maybe he's a one off. Maybe he's like okay. But maybe he, this is for notor extra also, notoriety. He's a business person, and yes, and uh, you guys can tell me if this is off base. But I kind of have this trust. Was it Reagan that said trust but verify? It's actually a Russian phrase that yeah, Reagan repeated. The oh. K, it's the KGB. Which is actually, be that's like such Cold War politics <laughs> where is. he's like, I'll shove this back in your face, Ruskies. Well, we're going to trust, and then, but we're going to verify. Hey, Nancy, hey. what do you think? Hey. Oh, I love that. Nancy, that was my Nancy. Nancy, do you listen to Kanye? I Just listen. say no. <laughs> um, got a pair of Yeezys in the mail the other day. Just say no to porn and drugs. Wait, was that your Nancy or was that your Ronald? Sounds like he's just saying no to Christianity. <laughs> uh, okay, but the Russell Brand one, can we move move on to him a little bit? Is that all right? Yeah, but, w but as a, what I was saying, though, is like I have this current policy, which is anybody famous like this, Russell Brand, um, Candace Owens, <clears throat> pick your convert now, uh, Kanye, and Kanye has sort of proven this point. Madonna. I don't. I don't trust maybe, anything. Maybe See how not. long it lasts. Everything can. There's, if you are a porn star that is starting to age out of the ideal age range for this, there's a relative. There's a speaking circuit you can go on, but by becoming a Christian and being an ex porn star and talking about the the ills of your ways. Now, that's very cynical on my part. I don't know their hearts, but there is like how much of this is a business decision and how much is not, it's tough to tell because that stuff seems to come out eventually. And I think with Kanye, some of this might've been a business decision. I know this is a side note, but on your comments about porn stars that end up becoming Christians, I would hope that that, I mean, it breaks my heart that that's the life they've lived. And, but also if they did accept Christ and they just turn their lives and it was completely changed and they just, they left everything behind. I realize it's the life they live, but we all got crap in, you know, in our lives. But if that happened, that's God, that's amazing. Um, I, I'm because with you. that's a tough, that's a tough life to get out of. And you get probably tossed aside, you know, at an early age. It's just, it's just awful. So I'm, I'm with you and I'm, I'm painting with a broad cynical yeah, brush. Yeah, I know. Um, just it's to okay. say like, it's my starting posture is like, great. 
Now we'll see. I'm not going to like put my trust and be like, yeah, he's on my team or whatever. So that's the the way you describe that, I think, speaks to the heart of this question, which is why do we <clears throat> react more strongly with these types, these types of people, whether it's a porn star or a celebrity or an athlete or a politician who's high visibility, high profile, when it, it implies that for some reason, and I think this is what I've noticed in myself, I, I believe that for some reason it was harder for them to convert than, in, than another person, a normal, not, like I said, normal civilian, that it, it, it was more difficult. Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe one could say, "Hey, they have more to lose." Maybe, maybe they're at the end of the rope, and there's nothing left for them to 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 turn to. But yeah, and maybe that they're going down the black hole of death, and they're like, "But that's not unique." No, it's not special. They don't. They don't. They haven't cornered the market on living in sin. Right, right, Jeff. Exactly. <laughs> See, Jeff's working See, on that. Senor. Right now. Per your opening <laughs> statements, <laughs> that you're so deep in sin. Uh, but there, I, I have caught myself, and, and and I think that's why. I think it's because my expectation is, as a celebrity or as a high profile person, there's this idea that we have that they've. What else could they need? They they're probably in a place of like, I, I'm happy. I have all the things. I have money. I have fame. I have people around me. Um, I'm able to do the things that I want to. That's good. And and so why would I need God versus a normal person? We struggle with things on a day-to-day basis that we don't have all of those boxes checked. Yeah. And it seems like we need more. Yeah. De- deconstruction is, or like testing your faith is a, a problem of progress. Like if you're, if your needs aren't met and you're just hustling and all, you're working multiple jobs and you're a single parent, like you don't have time to, the celebrities have time and they realize, I think for some of them, like Russell Brand, you, you reach the pinnacle on the top and you have all the sex you want and you have everything you think you really wanted and you realize like, oh, there's still a hole. Like you hear people, these, you hear like professional evolutionary sure. psychologists talking about that aren't Christians, by the way, talking about there is a God shaped hole in humans. They need to fill it. Yep. And so they will fill it with something. Right. And so for a lot of these celebrities, they, um, they they find they need okay i am not fulfilled and i got everything um and and also they have the time and the resources to be able to contemplate these things well, too I, I which think, is nice i think a part of it is they don't realize that Zach thinks they don't work <laughs> he thinks I, they just sit around when you say everything i think they get to that point where they feel like i've got everything and yet i still have that void i still have this black hole in my soul that can't be filled and i thought the notoriety and the fame and the, you know, having, being in the industry and being, my name is on television and in movies, my face is out there. I have, I, I'm seen as the person who has everything and yet I feel like I have nothing. And, yeah. and, and you could even go to the, um, the person who's just working their entire life and they're grinding it out in within a family, whether it's a mother or father or both. And they just, they reach a point with like, I feel like we, they get to the same spot, right? Like we're doing all this, but we feel like we have nothing still, even if you're providing and whatnot, it's like you have a family or you have friendships or you have a community and whether you're, you know, the highest paid yeah. celebrity. Yeah. Or you're the poorest person grinding it out. Ultimately, those two people still come to the same point of that aren't Christians. There's something missing, and I it will always be that way. Um, yeah. And I think that's why the I think that's why the celebrities come out and they're like uh, this something's not right, and it it has to be in these cases that we pointed out is Jesus. It, celebrities, they're just like us. <laughs> Celebrities are people too. <laughs> they but, are. But, can we flip to the uh, to the thing? Yeah. You say your thing. We can cue up the uh, clip that you yeah. got over there. The word that came to Producer mind was Jeff. was tribal. The reason we we glom on to somebody that converts to wherever we're at, whether it's Christianity or somebody that like likes the same sports team as us. If you just meet them, like instantly, you have a connection. You're like, oh, it's almost like we're friends. I've never talked to you before in my life, but you like the Angels too. Yeah, we can like commiserate right. over, how, over how bad they suck all the time. <laughs> But 
<laughs> but uh, I, I had a moment like that. But if I describe it on the podca- podcast, it will sound too douchey. I will tell you guys later. Okay. Ooh. That's right. We're, a- we're actual friends. <laughs> we're actual friends and we talk besides this show. Um, but the, the celebrities are seen, I wish I pulled up these stats, as smarter and more They're definitely prettier more well balanced and in general prettier and so oftentimes when a celebrity converts or a celebrity does something in common that you identify with we want to glom onto that because it seems more important partly it's, because of their platform you're justifying my faith too yes and this isn't faith related but i had i had never heard um i was it was at the grammys who was it was it taylor swift I don't know. It was one of one of the ladies that won. Um and you got like a fifty percent chance if you it's just say Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. And give me another one. Um who's with her brother writes all the songs? Uh Billy Eilish. Billy Eilish, thank you. I blanked on her name. I think it was Billy Eilish. So I've only heard her sing. She is an attractive young woman, incredible voice. Um Especially if you like the look where you're barely awake, then then, then she'll act, do extra things for you. That's actually a decent impression, Andy. She's got those sleepy eyes. Sleepy eyes. But great voice. You just assume things about her. And then when she's accepting her award and then she goes to talk, it's like, oh, she doesn't know anything. You, you can just hear it. She's just a young Black kid. Black guys, what's up? What's up, guys? <laughs> she's, she's, she's like less emotionally intelligent than my young teenagers. And it's... And it's it's a while, but when we see them and we see them on their pedestals, we can very often ascribe like much more wisdom and smarts to them. So when somebody converts, you just assume, oh, they're a Christian right. like I am. They believe Jesus like the all the ways we do. And then, like Andy said, we can get to this clip by Russell Brand and, and just try to see if we can decipher where he's actually at. I'm reading through the lines. What you're really trying to say is The Rock 2028. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please do. Ignore that starting video if you're watching this. We're not yeah. talking about Don Lemon. I felt a calling and mistranslated it time after time as various forms of addiction, substance misuse and drinking too much and an overwhelming urge to lose myself in concupiscence continually looking Wait, for can love you pause it? in all the wrong places. Con- and concupiscence? Did you hear that word? Concupiscence. He loves using big random words like that. With That's that, a very Russell Brand thing. To with do. that beautiful accent. Very I think I'm a, brand. I might be a brand that's, Brandinian. That's got to be something. Brandavidian. My guess is that has something to do with pornography. All right, let's go. Isn't it extraordinary, any of you that have experienced this already, to get baptized? Do you feel like, how can this ceremony have any real import? How can the gentle, or actually in my case, quite radical immersion beneath water, and in my case, a live river, make any real difference? How can the sins of the past be washed away? How can you be born again? How can you awaken anew? I suppose to answer that question, you have to inquire in of what you consider the self to be, whether you're made up just of impulses and urges and memories or whether or not you believe there is a ghost in the machine or more likely a Holy Spirit if you're willing to invite it into your life. For me, I've reached a point in my life where for a long while, in fact, I've known that the material world was not enough. And more than that, as many of you are surely already mouthing, it's not even about you. This I've learned as an addict in recovery, the pursuit of my own goals and my own agenda always leaves me cold and always leaves me empty and always leaves me wanting more. You can never have enough of what you don't really want. For me, this is a new discovery. It is a surrender undertaken in gratitude and in sincerity 
And I know that it's not something I'll be able to undertake perfectly, but for the first time in my life, I fully understand that I'm not at the center of my universe. And I say that as a parent, I've got three really, really beautiful kids I'm devoted to and dedicated to. But now I know that my function here is to be of service and to be guided and to no longer be in autonomous or authoritative control of the measures and pursuits that are put before me. And that aligns so beautifully with what we do here on this show and on this channel. This is an opportunity for us to look at corruption in institutions, look at hypocrisy in media, look at a planet that seems to be in pretty serious trouble and see how individually and collectively we can participate in an awakening. So for me, I've done what I believe is unavoidable, inevitable, or necessary for me for all of the exotic exploration, for all of the various drugs and substances, for all of the esoteric practices. I found it in that humble place that was at the end of my arm, at the end of my streets, sat at bus stops, sat in churches, droned on about in school assemblies, in Christianity and in particular in the figure of Christ. And I'm uh, done proselytizing. Your journey will be your journey, but I'll be praying for you as many have been praying for me. And I appreciate all of your prayers and I've felt your prayers and I've been carried by your prayers and I will do my best to honor your prayers. This is a conversation we can go on having because, hey, we're reading Mere Christianity as part of our book club. And if you become an awakened wonder, yeah, there you obviously go. you're very welcome. Can and you if it's not quick? something you can afford, let us know. Send us. Uh, okay. For what are you guys reactions to that? There's a lot like the mere Christianity is fun, but it, it, it's accompanied by a pitch to pay him money to join the book club type thing. So I, I have such a hard time. Like I, I hope this is real and um, I have a hard time with people that he, he just like stream of consciousness. He just talks and it's very smooth. Right. It's flowing. You believe every word. It's the type of person that I've learned to sort of be like, oh man, there's a little bit of cult leader. There's the thing I don't believe every word. That's that was the thing when he talked about his coming to Christ. I'm like I'm with you, and then and it it was heartfelt, and then he went on to worldly things. I'm like, wait, what? Are, what are we and talking also, about? There's no mention of wait, so, what, wait, wait, what worldly things did he go into? Um, he started talk. I mean, he literally all the drugs and substances and he, having everything. Um, not so much. There was something. There was stuff after. I'm like, wait, this has nothing to do with Jesus and that life. Like, I think he was talking about like other topics that you know we need to talk about. I'm like, mm, no. And he does tend to speak in like sentences the length of paragraphs, and it can be hard to track with him. Certainly, it just starts wandering. You're like. Well, but I'm it's not got sure a, what you're talking about now. But, it's got a but, hypnosis but, to it. But if you're with... It's it, into that rhythm. Like, a life of Jesus stays with Jesus. It doesn't start going into, like, other avenues, and it just felt like it started to go another avenues. I'm like... I'm truly like, yes, go for it, Russell. I'm like, you've got this. I love that you have yeah. gone down this path, and I hope it's... I hope, you know, you have people around you that are yeah. encouraging and you know can iron sharpens iron and that's the beauty of this podcast is we don't all share the same exact opinions um i here comes the dunk <laughs> no <laughs> i'm not dunking on anybody i just think uh, it it seems genuine what he was sharing seemed genuine i hope it's genuine i hope it sticks me too i hope that he does have people around him to help him because he's he's he is a baby Christian. He's just embracing it. I didn't have any problem with what he said at all in there. I, I loosely care about him trying to monetize getting into a book club. Like it, it's he's making he's, yeah, money. It's fine. But um, I'd love if he told his story of how this came to be. He, Look, he has. There's plenty of videos. If okay. you go to his YouTube channel, okay. you can be too, could become a subscriber. There's one other. If we get to it, there's the other clip is from his Instagram talking about the. Week one of being a Christian. Um, okay, well, but, well, I'm, so right. just to clarify, you did did you watch the video of him? Of I've his seen story? little I've seen little clips and pieces of him talking about it. I, I've not spent like, and, but a has ton that of time. kind of confirmed? You're like this is this is heartfelt. Like this is true. This is real. This is he, I've seen, he's had this moment. I've seen lots of Russell Brand before this. Uh, he is acting and talking differently 
And speaking of acting and talking differently, Jeff, you're fired. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um, what just happened? I was on him the Jeff whole time. He has been talking. asleep. I was queuing up the other video. I was getting ready. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen just, there's a lot of ones and zeros over here. Please. If you could see the ones and zeros I'm juggling over Did here. Did anybody give amazed. Jeff his Propecia today? Yeah. I mean, we, wait, Propecia? Can I? Not Propecia, listen, that's for me. <laughs> listener, leave a comment and thank Jeff for his time for his last episode that he's ever going to do with us. Fired! Just let him know that you appreciate the time he's been with us. Um, can I? So I'm going to be a little bit of... Uh, let me be the, uh, the the Bible defender type. Whoa. You, so I don't, don't have a problem with the way he talked about his baptism personally. A lot of Christians were disappointed that there wasn't all the mention of like, you know, checking all the boxes. Like I'm a, I'm totally a sinner. I can't save myself. Mm. You know, you, you acknowledge the sin and you have to, you're not, you know, you, you go through all those hoops, Roman roads type things. Do you guys see any like warning flags in there? Cause uh, I'm not a, a conservative doctrine police type Christian, but I know a lot of people are like, okay, he got baptized, but what does it actually mean if he doesn't have a proper understanding of like sin and repentance and then it's now, like, now you're he, born again? Did he just join the club or is there actually something going on here? Well, does he talk about that in this clip here? Maybe we'll find out. All right, let's roll this clip, Jeff. If you don't mind. I swear, if this all comes out, I'm going to be really upset. Week one. Like, as a Christian, has been amazing. The yeah. ceremony itself was incredible. I want to thank Bear Grylls and my mate Joe, Bear the Grylls. two men that stood either side of me and flanked me for their baptism itself. It was pretty incredible. There was a ceremony prior, some hymns. Those of you that have been baptized know about it. I did the baptism in the River Thames and in my home, so it was a very, very intimate experience. Wow. What I suppose most people will be interested in, other than the crazy detail that my mate Joe, during the ceremony, really injured his foot and we went straight from the baptism into the necessary Christian life of helping people, going to a hospital, helping an injured man. Like, this, Are there a lot of injuries in baptisms? There's another baptism injury. The ER and A&E <laughs> what what around the world I don't know. full of people what fresh happening? from baptisms, nursing wounds and injuries. The main thing is that since it... <laughs> I've cut myself in the water. Connection. Like, do you see what an amazing gift this is? I've heard, because I'm sort of aware of media, even though I don't pay much attention to it for obvious reasons, that some people are like kind of um, cynical about it. And of course, if they could stop people awakening, they would stop people awakening. If they could somehow foreclose against it, prohibit and prevent it. Perhaps this is not unique to Christianity. Maybe if you are awakening in a way that's personal to you, and I'd be really interested in hearing, they would equally oppose that but what they want mostly is for people to be Who's controlled they? curtailed contained by their material models you can they probably don't pause it. people recognizing yeah. oh, he's going my into it isn't about me it feels like he's straight the, from the, the uh, us versus them they whoever they is guess what we get to do is we get to think oh yeah i have an idea who they are that's brilliant oh. I think he just dovetailed it back into his previous mo, which was red pilled. <laughs> like that's that's kind of the way he worked. But it's a I'm okay. Like but I'm gonna give the guy some space because he's just he's just figuring it out. I can't I can't judge him the same way that I would judge me you and your shitty Christianity. I, it feels a little this too is true. Okay, it feels I, he's not a millennial, but it feels a little too millennial when they talk to the camera like, "Okay, guys, week 1. Oh my gosh. So guys, I'm like we, you've already lost me. I don't actually think you're in the right place. I think you've He's a media celebrity and influencer. Like that's not, his job. Yeah, but the it's fact just what he does. Right. By the way, so, we're dipping our we've I mean, we're dipping I'm, our toe I'm into completely this. theorizing here just based off the vibe that he's given up. It's like, oh, right, guys, week one of Christianity. Hey, by the way, here's my cross. I'm like, uh, I'm not exactly sure what's <laughs> he did, happening here. He did bring props. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, like, did somebody be like, okay, so Russell, here's what you do. And then you say, you could say this and then just kind of go off and say whatever you want. I'm like, I'm a little hesitant well it's part of just sharing culture like some people is it sh share everything what do you mean like it's yeah. constant 
Like he he's constant everything. If you go to his Instagram, it's it I mean his Instagram, yeah, but the his thing life, is, it's what Christ what what accepting Christ does is it completely shifts who you are. No, it doesn't. Really? Yeah. Oh, do you still sin? Go. Before you sinned, do you <laughs> did you become a Christian and do you still sin? How you did you like soccer before and after being a Christian? How you that's his biggest sin. Do you wash dishes and not wash dishes now? You're not. You're not totally. Those are changed. trivial things. Yet, yes, Tanya, you are. I, Tanya, does Jeff wash dishes? If you could send us a voicemail. <laughs> yeah. at, yes, you are completely changed. You're like, oh, this is how he is. You're not. Cha- you're not completely changed, but you are changed. The core essence of your personality does that completely change? Is what you're, what you love and attracted to, and find beautiful in the world? Does that change? Sometimes, some of this yes can, can change. Yes, but not it completely. Completely changes. I bet if I tested you on this, you you wouldn't say that. Okay, test me. I e okay. the what? all the general sins you mentioned at the top of this podcast. <laughs> Sin, sins sins are going to happen. We are not perfect. We're not Jesus. So you're so you're not going to completely change when you become a Christian. No, how how you see everything changes. How like all right, I just can see that walking into something and be like, yeah, whatever. No, it's not whatever anymore. It's a life in Christ, and that completely changes. You. So, I mean, and I'm not going to, you know what? I'm just theorizing about the vibe that I'm getting from him. I hope. You got flags. I hope that he's completely. I hope. Yes. I hope he's completely changed. I hope in a year from now, we're looking at videos of him, not only a believer, but just bringing other people into, doesn't even matter who it is. Doesn't have to be Hollywood people. Just anybody living a humble life. Life, I would love to see that. That would be, it would just shake the yeah. earth. Maybe that's the key word. The humble life is the part that feels a little weird right now because it doesn't feel very humble. Hey guys, week one. Necessarily, I'm like, I don't know, like but, de- definitionally, it, it won't be because his business is him. And so pre Christian, it's him and yeah. it's his takes on politics <laughs> and them the the elites that are out to control you and now post christianity we'll see does it shift at all because it's still like in that in that uh clip like instantly he's going into they 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 with right. zero definition on who they are it's just assumed and I, if you if you watch him a lot you get have a good idea who he's talking about but it's still instantly into the us versus them and that is a little bit of my red flag for him or, or anybody else, we're all caught in this us versus them, who's in, who's out. Everything is polarized. And uh it's A or B. He, he was he was already there though. Correct. And so I'll I'll give him time. Yeah. And I I I'm interested to see how that shifts. But man, we gotta we gotta get out of this. Jesus wasn't Jesus did do us versus them occasionally, but never with people. It was always with people who thought they weren't the sinners. It's the people that thought, thought they were the righteous. Anybody that was the sinner, the pe- person that was looked down to, upon, the person that was the lowest of society, yeah. he never did the turning of the tables type stuff on them. And so I just want, I, I just, I hope for the best. Yes. For, for this. So it, if, we go back to somebody who was ahead Trust, of Trust, but verify. <laughs> if we go back to somebody who was ahead of his time, Kirk Cameron, who he was a celebrity. He was, I mean, he was a very popular, he was on a popular show and in a couple of movies. And then he went, and, I mean, he was just like, I'm a Christian. I'm not going down this path. And he went in a different direction and completely humble and outspoken to like, I'm a believer and this is what's right and this is what's good and this is what's good for my soul and my family and I, I don't want to take them down that path and so I'm going this direction. Still going to act, and, and but I'm, when I act, it's going to be things that are encouraging and will edify you know people that are Christians. And, and so, like, that's very different than you know, what we see happening now of like a famous person be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm following Jesus now. I'm like, okay, 
like now does your life you know does it demonstrate that as you're you know going out into the world that's kind of the big question i have for everyone who's anybody it doesn't matter if you're a little person big person big person being like just somebody who's in the the face of of the media so if I big. could say something here. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh you don't voice need to eat that, here. Mike. I'm, I'm right up on it. I am on <laughs> this SM58. One of the concerns that I've always had about all these guys is that when it's when it's positive for them, when they're enjoying. And girls. And guys and girls, when they're enjoying <laughs> their conversion experience, when it's the exciting and it's new. Same thing with Kanye. Honeymoon. I'm seeing, I'm seeing it. Yeah, the honeymoon phase. That's what I think happened to Kanye. He got through the honeymoon phase and then it was like, oh. This takes work, just like every other relationship. And then they're yep. like, oh, this isn't as much fun anymore. Next. Time to make some porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> porn sounds best. like fun. I repent, Jesus. It's, I repent. It's oh, the Lord. natural next step. <laughs> Obviously. All right. Well, you know, this Jesus thing is not working. I think porn. Jeez, well, oh for gosh. some people, for Kanye. Oh, my gosh. All right. What were we going to say, Andy? Uh, well, we're getting close to landing this plane. Well, we think. are getting close. There's so much more I want to say. Uh, well, what's one of those things? Well, I don't have a problem with, oh, he didn't say all the doctrinally, the classic orthodox, this is what baptism is. Yeah. I don't have a problem with all that. Okay. And maybe I don't know if that's right or not, but it's where I feel comfortable. I just like directionally, what is the fruit, his life and his business? What's the fruit that's going to bear? Sure. And it, it does that, is that directionally towards like actual love in the world? Not the like, oh, just love, man. But love can be the hardest thing you do. If you have, if your parents have teenagers, you know what I'm talking about? That letting go, knowing when to not let go. It hurts so bad when you love well because sometimes it looks like laying down your life. And so, like, if that's where his the direction of his life is going, awesome. And I, I hope that for everyone. Sounds like it. I mean, he had some hospital trip post baptism that happened. I couldn't understand what was happening. Well, there. he was baptized in the river, river Thames. Sounds like somebody doing the dirty. baptism stepped on something and like really cut their foot badly, and they had to rush to the hospital right after the baptism. And he said so. that he went and did Christian things. They were probably the hospital, <laughs> probably fulfilling. It was probably Bear Grylls. What was the show he did? Man versus Wild. Yeah, they, it was probably he was probably filming an episode of that too. So it's like we need an infection. We need a fake motorcycle crash. Oh, we need to. <laughs> I'm going to drink my own blood. It'll keep me sustained for weeks. Uh, speaking of what's real and what's not, that, that show, Man uh, vs. Wild, got exposed because the crew, everyone, they go, they I go, know. Sleep, this in, has they been, go sleep in buildings. This has been shit on Man for versus years Wild. and years and years. I don't want to jump on that train. He's apologized. Let's move past it, Zach. Also, he's ma- I don't even care. He's making a TV show. Who cares? Theater of the mind. Just, oh. just buy into the reality. <clears throat> Do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's do some feedback, how about... Yeah, let's get to that feedback. We teased it. Now it's time. Sing it if you know it. (laughs) Okay. We got some... We got some feedback? Did, Did you put it in the show notes? I'm sorry. Yeah, I did. Oh, Actually, did. we got our first feedback from Scott about Russell Brand's conversion. <laughs> Who is God's children? <laughs> Thank Russell you, Scott. Brand. We wonder, missed you. Wonder what you were doing there. All right. Uh, starting at the top of it, and we can just hand off a few of these too. I'll catch a couple of them. This is from the episode of Don't Make Me Defend Mark or John, or is this the short, maybe? The shorter clip, the short. Mark Driscoll or John Lindell. Yeah, talking about Mark Driscoll or mm-hmm. and John Lindell. Who is not the My Pillow Guy's brother, as I thought. Uh, disappointing. Christopher Gonzalez commented, new sub. Thank you, gents. Bless you all. Thank you. Bless you, Chris. What if that was the thing that we did? <laughs> yes, bless uh, you. Mort's Garage says, uh, speaking of which, look at this t-shirt here. ba 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 Mort's Garage says, this whole thing is a circus. You're not wrong, Mort. It is a circus. By the way, go check out Mort's Garage. Mort's Garage. 
on YouTube. YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah, check him out. Thank you, Mr. Garage. All right. Tag someone else. Uh, Jim McLaughlin or Jay McLaughlin. I'm going to assume Jim. If Lindell was a real man, he would have humbled himself. You got something, Jeff? Go ahead. <laughs> Just only because it has my name on it. Uh, King Yahtzee. Just want to say. Wait, where are you going? Hold on. Hold on. He's at the bottom. He skipped ahead. Dude, don't control me. Just want to say that as much as you find it, as much (laughs) as I love this podcast and Jeff, it blows my mind that Jeff is taking Driscoll's back on this. Driscoll has been poisoned to almost every ministry he interacts with, giving him the benefit of the doubt and attacking Lindell seems very lopsided in my opinion. Jeff, please don't become an angry political evangelical. Uh... Too late, King Yahtzee. <laughs> you are so late. Very late. Um, Not exactly sure what accent that is. We know what accent that is. Uh, let's go to Duet Breaker. First time here in this YouTube channel. The middle guy cusses before anyone calling what Mark did a B move. That was you, Andy. Middle guy. <laughs> the dude is totally emotional and doesn't care what Mark did, but only how, like a woman. Beta! <laughs> I wonder how his relationship is with his dad. This is this one's wild. I love this. Thank you, Duet Breaker. Thank you for uh, your comment. It's great. And uh, my relationship with my dad is fantastic. I happened to also have seen this clip before just the show, so I knew a little bit of what was going on, and I still think it was a bitch move. Ooh, double down. All right, Klimo the Great. This is where the compassionate Christians clash with word-following Christians. I don't know what that means, but I like the dichotomy. And by like, I mean I hate. I I don't... I wonder, it's like, can't you be... If you mean by word-following Christians, they probably mean like Bible following. But if you mean Jesus as the word of God following, I think there's an overlap with the compassionate Christians. Does there have to be like a total separation? Insert the meme with the woman looking and the equations coming towards her. And she's just like, how do I put this all together? (laughs) Okay. What does it mean? I'm going to use a little tone here. Odolono. uh, And he edited it or she Bibles and beer. WTF. Why not Bibles and drugs or Bibles and pern? (laughs) You can't even put the word porn. Just say it. I don't think we can say it. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I'll take things. That, I might have to do some editing now that uh, I think about it. YouTube doesn't no, like that. I don't like it. Word Good, great. Uh, of I, can, all, I of, can say fuck. But. Of all companies, YouTube's like, Prawn. no, we don't like that. I'll take two things that don't go together for 500, Alex. Okay, thank you. Can we just you. park it on this as the last uh, uh, as the last comment and spend a little t- time on it? I know we're wrapping it up, but this one's fun. Um, it is fun. That's a big leap to be like we're having we're sitting down. Just a ma- okay, everybody out there, and maybe this for Odalona. Odalona, we're out there. We're just guys sitting around having a conversation. Imagine us in a restaurant, a, a pub in the backyard, wherever it might be. And we're talking about life. That's literally what this is. We just happen to be doing a podcast called Bros, Bibles, and Beer. And we're all Christian. We have families. We love our families. We have great, yeah, we have great friendships and uh, we disagree on stuff and it's all good. And it it has nothing to do with this drinking beer or whatnot. That's not the comment directly below from Dave Millsap. Actually, he replied to that guy or gal, said, pretty sure Bible bros invented beer called monks, which I thought was a good response. <laughs> yeah. And and we and ultimately, it's not about like one-upping people like, oh, well, this. And it's like, yeah, but I mean, it'd be, if you were with us and you were having a conversation with us and we were having a beer, I don't think you would think anything of it. You would just be like, you know, these guys are good guys. Well, uh, a lot of people struggle. I think that there's a there's a section of Christianity the that the beer and the language has a, has a trouble with that. Yeah, the beer beer and language are two things that are in in gray territory for them. Can and, we- and so it's hard it's it's hard to like have these things coexist in the same space because maybe that you know they've experienced it themselves in a light that has never been positive. 
and it's always been mm. super negative. Like my dad, for example, his his parents growing up were s- super gnarly alcoholics, and there was there was no like, hey, let's just have a beer. It is we're going all the way uh, tonight, and so is that why you have a terrible relationship with your dad as a <laughs> commenter? That's why. <laughs> By the way, tonight, in your honor, uh, what's your name, Odolano? Look at this. Just having myself a little sparkling water. <laughs> Your move. <laughs> but what we about did, the other guys? In, in our in our brief, we're we're a baby YouTube channel. We're not baby Christians, but in that effect, to that end, the algorithm is like, okay, you've got this content, some of which is apparently good, especially when you attach Mark Driscoll's name to it, and so. It's finding people th- that it thinks like, oh, this person also likes Jesus stuff, right? And so it's hitting a lot of people that w- where they were they're not our target audience. And so when people are like, maybe he, he said bitch, he said the fuck word, uh, whatever it is, we'll edit. That they're out. drinking beer. It's they're not our audience, and so it is. We're, we we are getting some of those comments that aren't they're not subscribing, and it's like that's okay. We're not for yep. you. Um, we're for a specific set of audience. We're, we're just literally, this is actually, we're not forcing it. I, gosh, dang it. I'm, You're the worst I'm podcaster, worst podcaster. I've ever seen. We are not, this isn't like a contrived, although we did build this studio. This isn't a like, hey, let's be cool. Let's cuss. Hey, let's be cool. Let's drink. No, it's like w- this started out of us hanging out, having the best conversations at, while we're having a couple beers. We are naturally cool cussing drinkers that's right this podcast that's just who we are this podcast originated from it may have been at least eight guys sitting around a blue recording ball and we were in somebody's living room just having a conversation and that was like oh well that was fun i don't i mean we just had a conversation and we recorded it the core of what they what this person cares about is not that we have these conversations that's right. not what right. they're worried about what they're worried about right. is you're mixing Christianity and something that feels like it's opposed to Christianity, which is beer. And so that's that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we've done enough laps on this. We're at time. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Real quick. We didn't get to... We, we had more... Man, Dave, Dave Millsap and Cam Smith... Just is, legendary. Is it worth me us me shutting I, up and just getting I mean, to him? Let's do it. All right, just get Cam, to him. Cam did say, uh, he, among other things, love the general Bible reading and thinking through the applications of the various passages. So for that, Cam, we love that you listen and comment. I am afraid that we will woefully disappoint you that we we don't do a lot of specific Bible reading, but maybe that's something we'll get to where we we do break down specific doctrines. But I appreciate that you're here. And also, Dave Millsap, as always, we will do our best to sift through these comments. Yeah. Um, keep them coming. Keep them coming. If you really want them to be seen as YouTube builds and the comment sections become more and more convoluted, email brosbiblesbeer at gmail.com. Also, the voicemail would be very useful, which I already forgot that, but we'll, we'll refresh Speakpipe. that. Speakpipe. Dot com Thank you. Slash bros. Speakpipe.com slash bros. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up. Yeah. For Zach, Jeff, I am Andy. Grace. Peace. Peace. Cheers. Cheers. Clink. <laughs>